Hey guys, Tony Maritato here, licensed physical therapist. So I'm recording this video for a close friend, but I thought it might be an interesting video to share on the YouTube channel. I wanna talk about two kinds of shoes, kind of a more high stability cross trainer, what you would normally expect versus a more minimalist shoe. And this question came in specifically about somebody who had a meniscectomy. Uh, basically, the orthopedic surgeon went in through arthroscopic surgery to clean out or to breathe the knee. There are some raw edges left after a meniscectomy. And so this individual was saying they still have some pain, they still have some swelling. Should they go with a more uh, high cushion stability shoe or should they stay with their traditional minimalist shoe? So if you don't know, just a little brief context, a minimalist shoe. Now I just ran, this is the shoe that I use for running every single day. Uh, this is a minimalist, it's a Witten brand shoe. There's no heel lift. It's a zero drop shoe, so there's no elevation to the heel. Uh, there is, you know, the only reason why you see that toe spring here is simply because I've been running and kind of broke them in that way. But effectively the foot is flat on the inside. Now this one has a wide toe box. It's not as wide as some of the other minimalist shoes that I enjoy wearing, but it's wide enough for my foot. These are the three characteristics. And then of course, it's incredibly soft. It's incredibly flexible and pliable. Uh, it basically is kind of like an aqua sock or just a very, very lightweight, comfortable shoe. It provides a little protection against glass and gravel since I do run out on the roads. Now this is an ASICS. It's more of a conventional cross trainer. You can see that it's got a, um, it does have a forward drop. It's got an elevated heel. It doesn't have much of a toe spring, but it's got a little bit. And then you can see kind of a little more of a tapered toe box, not quite as tapered as a more fashion shoe, but there is still kind of that shape. You know, I, I always say, and, and this is my theory, Shoe companies, especially athletic shoe companies, tend to treat the foot like a wheel because a wheel rolls forward, so they taper it, they curve it, they lift the back end to propel you forward. Mechanically, it makes sense why you would do that, but our foot is not a wheel. Our foot is more like a hand. And so for my friend who asked me the question about what kind of shoe she should wear after a meniscectomy, the simple answer is, one, you want to wear the shoe that's most comfortable for you. Two, I don't truly believe there's a significant difference whether you choose a high cushion or high stability shoe versus a minimalist shoe. I think that as long as you get out there, you get active, you pay attention to your body. If you do too much, your knee is going to swell. If you do too little, your knee's not going to improve. From a more kind of geek out on the science perspective, I'm going to make a comparison to boxing gloves. Boxing gloves is another one. I grew up boxing. I was boxing in college. Boxing allowed boxers to punch each other more forcefully, more frequently, resulting in more trauma to the head and the brain. That's not necessarily a great outcome. And when we think of a shoe, a minimalist versus a high cushion, it's kind of the same thing. Like there, there's benefit to self-limiting behaviors in human movement. If I can't lift the weight because it's too heavy, my body limits my ability to do that. Now, if I artificially find ways to do it, there's an increased risk of injuring myself because I'm moving more load than I can handle. In boxing, if I get punched more than I can normally get punched, there's an increased risk of brain injury and running. If I have less sensitivity, if I don't feel the road and the impact as much, I'm gonna accumulate more force. While the immediate impact of the force is lower, it's spread over a longer period of time, a longer impact. I'm still going to accumulate a higher total volume of force. Now, I'm not saying that that's good or bad. I'm just acknowledging the fact that if I go to a minimalist shoe and I find that the impact force is, is a higher magnitude and I stop sooner, it's reasonable for me at least to think that that's going to keep me from overdoing it and keep me out of trouble while my body is recovering. So my vote for me personally is a minimalist shoe because of the self-limiting behavior. But I would tell you and anybody watching, go with what you feel is the best for you. I'm not trying to talk anybody out of what they enjoy. If you like a Hoka, buy a Hoka. If you like a minimalist, buy a minimalist. 
The most important thing is you just get out there, you move, you get active, you enjoy the sun, and really you just listen to your body. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have specific questions about anything on the channel, go ahead and post them in the comments, and I'll catch you on the next video.